Hello, my name is Paul Nadasdi, and I have been living and teaching in Japan for 20 years. I have spent the last 10 years of my career at Tokyo Denki University, TDU, which is a technical college in Northeast Tokyo. Since the start of 2020, like many teachers, I found myself in a totally new teaching environment, dealing with sudden changes, including teaching from home, using software that was unfamiliar to me, and trying my best to learn on the job without disrupting my students' educational experience. Though there were many challenges along the way, one thing stood up to the test, helping me through the hardest of times in this unpredictable period. And that was the materials I use in many of my regular classes, the Interchange series, currently in its fifth edition. Today, I'm going to talk about my experiences in teaching in the changing landscape since the start of 2020, and how Interchange 5th edition was adapted to the online environment. First, I'll talk a little bit about how I started using Interchange and how it has become a permanent part of my teaching. Next, I will talk about how I utilized Interchange when shifting to teaching completely online. I will then briefly talk about how other elements related to Interchange help support my teaching. I will focus on how Interchange was used during Zoom lessons, allowing for the continuation of communicative exercises and how it kept students engaged and motivated. And finally, I will talk a little bit about how the elements that I have used during this period of teaching online may be integrated into the normal classroom setting. I started using Interchange in 2008 when it was the third edition. I worked at a small college in rural Niigata in the northeast of Japan, teaching communicative English to undergraduates taking courses in international studies, business and informatics. In 2011, I moved to TDU where I started to use the same materials. This time the fourth edition with students of science and technology, engineering and architecture and design. The versatility of the materials meant that despite the marked difference between the types of students using them, they achieved the fundamental goal they got the students talking. Despite some occasional reticence, which isn't uncommon in Japanese educational foreign language learning contexts, there were always opportunities to speak in class. And it was encouraging to see students being able to express themselves using the vocabulary and grammar that they had learned through junior high school and high school. By the end of 2019, several teachers in my department were successfully using the fifth edition and had gotten used to the rhythm of using it in the regular classroom setting. One of the strong points of Interchange is that it is structured in a way to fit into an individual teacher's teaching methodology. The PPP presentation practice production structure of the lessons allows for scaffolding to take place in the communicative classroom and especially where students are not overly confident or the level of English is comparatively low. Students can speak face to face with one another on simple topics, expressing their own thoughts after the initial tasks have laid the groundwork. The communicative classes at TDU using Interchange were a success. And the feedback had always been positive where the materials used and the amount of time communicating in class were concerned. Then in March 2020, everything switched to completely online. And TDU licensed Zoom to be the software we would use for the duration. And we were expected to teach synchronously each week with the students attending from home. With this format, there was the prospect of losing some very important aspects of classroom teaching. Some questions arose. Would the students be able to see each other? On Zoom, there was the option of having your camera turned off for the duration of class. 
how would the teacher be able to deal with problems individually? How can the teacher keep students motivated and on task? How will the teacher be able to evaluate participation when much of the time the students have their mics off or are in breakout rooms and out of view? How is it possible to get the students to mingle and communicate with one another? And then related to the textbook, how could we show students which page they were on? How would we give answers? How would we play audio tracks so they could be heard clearly? These issues were concerns from the start, and it was going to take some considerable classroom management to get the classes working as they did in normal circumstances. To address the issues related to the textbook, we were provided by Cambridge University Press in Japan with Presentation Plus, which is the whole of the interchange course in digital form. P Plus immediately made life easier and answered many of the questions above. P Plus allowed teachers to show the pages on the screen while they were using the screen share function in Zoom. So students knew what they should be looking at immediately. It has all the listening task audio tracks embedded, so they could be played at the touch of a button. The pages in P Plus are dynamic and allow for zooming in and out and have an easy scrolling function. There is also a quick access menu function where you can get to any page in the book easily, including the interchange activities at the back of the book. For those activities, they tend to be very good in the face-to-face -face setting, as many of them are stand up and walk around activities. However, in Zoom, I had to adapt and compromise slightly and more on that later. For a basic textbook lesson, first, students complete a grammar and vocabulary activity by themselves. This is a great way to start the lesson as the students can re-familiarize themselves with the content they prepared for leading up to the lesson. Once they have completed the task, they move on to a conversation task in which a basic conversation is demonstrated. During this task, they have a chance to practice with one another. In a usual classroom setting, individuals would practice with the person sitting next to them or around them, which means that there is less interaction by various members of the group. In the Zoom setting with the breakout room function, the pairings are chosen randomly, which means that students will get a chance to practice with a variety of their classmates during the semester. For this task, the students practice two times with me going from room to room and monitoring and then they come back to the main session. It is here that they have a chance to interact with me for the first time and have a chance to score some bonus participation points. I ask a series of questions based off the conversation and ask them to put up their hands in Zoom. A variety of hands go up, which is a great sign, as usually in the classroom setting, very few, if any, students would volunteer an answer. Several students give their answers, all getting bonus points. After this, I play the second part of the conversation, which has its own set of questions. After playing the audio twice, I elicit answers. Again, even in lower level classes, hands go up and several students volunteer an answer. For this part, I can now reveal the answers on the screen using P+, which makes life easier for me and the students. In the past, I would either have to read out the answers, which of course is no guarantee that all the students would understand them, and most would be too shy to ask me to repeat them. Alternatively, I would put them up on a screen, but though the technology is available at my university, this required a screen to be dropped down, especially in rooms with blackboards rather than whiteboards, and an overhead projector would just about be magnified enough to show the answers. Lights would often have to be dimmed too. A lot of trouble just to give answers that would potentially slow the lesson down. With P+, that problem is solved immediately. After covering the grammar and engaging with the text and me, we usually move on to a speaking exercise, which is a continuation of the grammar task. But this time the students give their own information when answering. Again, after a brief explanation, I highlight where we are in the book and give an example, often asking students to practice an example with me. Then we move on to the task, 
with this time three students per breakout room. In the breakout rooms, the students are now giving their own information, and I join them to make sure they are on task, giving them participation points along the way. By this stage, they should be having slightly longer conversations, and many of them are doing this with their cameras on, so they are engaging with each other. Again, as the groups are random, different students are getting a chance to speak to various partners in this session, so it allows for more connectivity in class. Whereas in the normal class setting, individuals would only be talking to the people around them. There is some direct benefit from randomizing students in breakout rooms. It is often the case that male and female students don't mix in class in Japanese educational contexts. And during class activities, they separate, then assemble in two distinct groups in the room, which means if one group is represented by fewer members, they could be missing out on valuable communication time. However, on Zoom, there is little choice but to interact as you are put in a breakout room with random partners. And it is unlikely to always be with male or female students in a breakout room. From the feedback about the positive experiences students have had in class so far, being put together has not had a negative effect on them and has maybe even led the way to more interaction when returning to face-to-face -face classes. At least I'll be raising the question as to why they don't mix so easily after they had no trouble interacting in the online environment. Once the main part of the unit is complete, I sometimes go to the back of the book and have the students complete the interchange activities. As I mentioned before, there are a variety of activities and though some are adaptable, most are either stand up and walk around activities or ones that involve larger groups, which is not as practical to set up as it is in a classroom setting. However, if there was a board game, I would demonstrate what they had to do by using the annotation function in Zoom or in P+, and I would show the students how to do the task or play the game. Again, being able to highlight instructions makes life a lot easier than the equivalent in class, where I would look out to a sea of bemused faces as I tried to explain what they would have to do for the game or class activity. On P+, I went through the instructions slowly and I would get everyone to give me a thumbs up in the reaction function of Zoom if they understood. Most of the time they did. So again, that kept the class moving and kept students on task. Though this is one of the most challenging activities, it was also one that seemed to work with the least amount of support from me. When checking the students playing the game in the breakout rooms, they were doing so excellently. For the final 40 minutes of lessons, whether it is in the class or on Zoom, there is an extended period of speaking test practice where the students get to speak in timed conversations in groups for around 30 minutes with a focus on the topic of the day. These sessions have a dual effect. First, they allow the students to speak for longer on specific subjects. And second, it prepares them for speaking tests. Interchange's structure allows for a gradual scaffolding over the lesson. And at this stage, the students should be capable of speaking at length. This has proven to be a very popular part of the lesson. And it is maybe one of the few things that works better when students are face to face rather than on Zoom. As when they are in class, they have a chance to move around and talk to each other. Unfortunately, Zoom's breakout functionality doesn't allow for such flexibility but it is still a successful component of the lesson. After each class, students are required to review the lesson and prepare for the subsequent lesson. To do this, I use various supplementary materials and Cambridge's online resources. The homework consists of three elements, but sometimes four, depending on the circumstances. The main homework is as follows. Students must complete a set of online workbook activities which are accessed through Cambridge's LMS website. Each unit online matches the grammar and the vocabulary they will be studying in the next lesson. So this helps familiarize them with the content and helps prepare them for the next lesson. This homework is completed every time there is a unit to be studied the following week. And I can monitor the students' progress and score in the back end to make sure they are preparing correctly. 
The next homework is based on language summaries associated with each unit. These appear on the website and in the teacher's book, which accompanies the course. Each unit has a list of words and expressions that summarize the content of the unit. Students must write down the words and expressions from the language summary, creating a vocabulary diary. They must write the English, a Japanese translation, and an example sentence in context. They only do this for the words they don't know and not for words they already know. This is a useful way of building vocabulary, and it is another way to familiarize them with what is coming in the next lesson. Also, it means that vocabulary and grammar do not have to be explained in class, allowing for more time to be spent on communicative activities. Finally, students must read the speaking test practice questions and prepare answers for the next lesson, which are questions based off various parts of each unit. By doing all of this, students should be thoroughly prepared for each lesson and should be able to understand the unit contents with little trouble. It's certainly been the case that there are fewer requests for confirmation of meaning of vocabulary items than when classes were conducted in person. Having the resource in front of you and online, being able to translate immediately if necessarily is probably another good reason for this difference. We have gradually seen the resumption of students attending the class in person. And this is in the form of hybrid style classes. These types of classes present fresh challenges for the teacher and the materials had to be adapted once again. With hybrid style high flex classes, 50% of the students attend, but all remain connected through Zoom. This was a challenge, particularly with basic hardware settings and especially things like playing audio or with feedback coming through when students hadn't connected their headphones. Also, when students are speaking, there is often interference or sound leaking into conversations in breakout rooms, which was a little distracting at times. There were also issues when doing speaking tests as extra rooms needed to be booked to conduct the tests and connection was often lost on Zoom when students moved between rooms. However, we are gradually moving back to face-to-face -face classes. And this is no doubt good news for teachers and students alike. How interchange will be used post Zoom is going to be different in several ways. Not being able to identify students quickly will be frustrating and not being able to call on somebody immediately will slow things down. Also, not being able to mix up groups and put different pairs together might hinder the classroom dynamic especially as male and female students tend not to mix. However, there are some positives to have come from this period of change. Using Zoom and Interchange in combination has motivated me to use a lot more online resources. Whereas before, I may have been a little reluctant to use online components, they have now become an integral part of my teaching. Also, Cambridge have recently released a new online workbook, C1, which I will use for all my communicative classes from next year. Using it already in conjunction with Interchange for one semester classes at TDU, I'm already seeing the benefits of the system, which has a lot more emphasis on the gamification of learning. The students at TDU tend to engage with this type of content more enthusiastically which may not come as a surprise with the type of university it is. So any element of learning that can engage students further is a bonus. Also, P Plus is integrated into the C1 system, so I will continue to use it in class rather than having to use an overhead projector. As you can scroll and zoom into various parts of the text, this will be vital for keeping students on task. This is one of the best things that has come out of using the Interchange series on Zoom. I feel very confident using P+, and I can integrate it easily into face-to-face -face classes. As P+, also has audio tracks embedded, and as it can display answers, it is a one-stop shop for coordinating the class with fewer interruptions. Ultimately, because of the Interchange series versatility, it is a book that students can continue to get the most out of, whether online or face-to-face. -face. It is adaptable to a variety of situations, catering for both the needs of the teacher and the student. 
I would hope that in some way that Zoom software and interchange can still be used for some classes once we return to normal classes. If, for example, we could provide some core lessons face to face and others on Zoom to fully utilize the software's potential, then we might find some more ways for our students to interact. Online teaching has a massive potential and interchange is a tool that fits seamlessly into it. With the two moving forward together, I can see a bright future for our students as they get the most out of their English studies. Thank you for listening.